What you see in front of you at the moment is the interface for the subassembly composer. Um, this composer was available last year um, as part of the Autodesk Labs in a, a beta form, um, but at that stage you couldn't make um, corridor shapes from it, so you couldn't get volumes out of the subassemblies you're building. You can now, and I'm very happy about that, and I'll show you how to do it. All right. What we're aiming to do today, if I just flick to the next slide here, is do a bit of a demonstration piece. Uh, it'll show you how to do a number of different things all in one little sub-assembly. So what we're talking about is this piece of sub-assembly that runs from there. It's effectively a, uh, a batter slope, or a tricky sort of batter slope. It's got a, a, a swale or um, water table on one side of it, which will go in all the time. Um, but what we're going to do is when we get round to this point here, we're going to say, okay, all the time we've got the swale in, but uh, when it gets to this point it decides whether it's in cut or fill. Now there is an example that Autodesk uh, do um, on this, uh, almost exactly the same as this. Uh, they run for it very quickly, um, but what it's going to do is uh, at this point, decide whether it's in cut or fill. If it's in cut, it's just going to put in this little section of link in here up till it hits the, the ground surface, wherever that happens to be. If it's in uh, fill, it's going to say, well, actually, I don't want to just stop it um, at that point. If it's in fill, I want to put a bund on the side. And we're going to put this bund, we're going to put a curved uh, edge in it, um, and we're also going to put a, uh, a shape associated with it as well, just for a, like a line material, something of that nature. So, uh, the Autodesk example goes through the basic uh, nature of this thing, um, but we're going to do a few more things with it, plus I'll show you some of the ins and outs that you need to know to make it work properly. Um, so without further ado, let's just rip into it. Eh? So here we go. Uh, let me bring up the sub-assembly composer. Okay. Let me uh, get your screens to catch up there. I think you should be able to see that by now. Um, what, uh, what This is what you start off with is a blank um, file. It makes a thing called a PKT file, and that's what it uses for, for making these sub-assemblies. So on the uh, right over here is a preview preview window. On the In the center top is a flowchart, which you use for building up components. Uh, the properties of which show down the bottom uh, when you do that, and we've got some targets we can assign down in the bottom right. So let me just rip into it, and I think you'll see how it, how it works as we go along. So the first thing I do is want to put uh, grab one of these um, tools on the side here. Effectively, it's for making links and points. Uh, the simplest ones are up the top. So we go and make a point, drag it left click and hold, drag it into the space here, and it starts the first bit of the flowchart. It's going to make point one, and you can see it's appeared on the right hand side here, uh, at the origin. Um, and we're going to tell it to start at the origin, and have no X and no Y offset from that. So the origin is the, the insertion point of the sub-assembly once it gets made. Uh, we can put point codes and things in there. Um, for instance, you might want to call this thing hinge. So there's a number of them called hinge in the uh, sub-assemblies that have already been made for daylights and things. However, if I just call it hinge, watch what happens when I click on another line. We get this exclamation mark showing up here, it says something is wrong. This is one of the things uh, that doesn't show up in the other videos I've seen. So it's telling us the code hinge is not a valid input parameter, and you think, why? Why is that? The reason is, and it took me a little while to find this, but you've got to put double quote marks around the name hinge. Once you've done that, it accepts it. So any point codes, any link codes, any shape codes have to have those double quotes around it to make it work. Just one of those things. Um, this does have uh, some help files with it, and I think it will take us through to, yes it does, to the wiki help um, on the Autodesk website. Now there's a bunch of uh, help files in here, I'll just let your screens catch up a little bit there. 
a bunch of help files and uh, oh, sorry, help uh, data. But there's also some files in there which are downloadable, which are um, example files of how to use this in different uh, scenarios. So that is actually very, very useful. Um, but for the moment, uh, I'm going to move that out the way. Um, so that's the Autodesk Wik Wiki help where that goes to. If you haven't seen that before, it's uh, relatively new, but they've uh, a new type of help system that uh, Autodesk are putting in. Okay, but for us, we need to do the next thing, which is to make a link from that point. Now, if we go and um, put in a link, we can put in a link, but we need two points to make it from. Um, the easiest way to make a link is actually to put in another point. So if I left click and hold, drag another point in down below here. And it's going to be at P2. We can give it another point code if we wanted to, but in this case I'm not too worried about Well, we call it hinge as well, I guess. So that it gets recognized. Now, these point codes and other codes are case sensitive. So if you want them to match, they have to be the same as what's in your code set in Civil 3D. Let's go for a different type of defining where this point's going to go. So let's say it's a... Um, a slope and a, chain, a delta x or a, an x coordinate, a horizontal offset, horizontal width I should say. So let's grab one of those. It's going to go from point 0.1. It's going to have a slope of, actually, this is what we need. To, we need to define something there first. So let's just uh, leave that at, as it is for the moment. What I, I really need to do is come down to my input output parameters here and start specifying some parameters that I want to use to set out this subassembly. So for instance, you'll be used to when you use the daylight subassemblies, for instance, you'll be used to using um, input parameters for the fore slope, the fore slope width, um, the back slope uh, of the the swale, uh, perhaps the width of the bottom of the swale, etc. You've got to define those before you're going to use them. So let's go to the input output parameters down here on the bottom right. We've already got one in there, it's the side. Um, and it's going by default, I'll have the subassembly use the right side. So I'll build everything out to the right. We can then go and click on create parameter. And I'm going to call this. Um, for slope underscore slope. I'm only going to do a few of these. You can do as many as you want uh, or as many, many as you need to. However, um, just for speeding up the webinar today, I'm not going to do all of them. I'll just show you how they work anyway. Uh, type is double precision uh, integer, so I'm more double precision uh, number. So I'm pretty happy with that. There's a whole bunch of different uh, types using super elevation, etc. Um, it's an input parameter, and let's have a default value of um, minus one to one. Begging your pardon. It shouldn't be double at all. It should be slope. There we go. That's the next one I was thinking about. Should be double. Um, so let's go and make that minus one. In fact, you can just type in minus one, it'll, it'll work that out. Okay, so that's the slope, and it's an input parameter, so we can change it. It's uh, parametric, if you like, so it's, it's in the properties of the subassembly, and we can go and change that in Civil 3D. So that's what these input parameters are for. Let's make another one, call it the full slope width. You can't have spaces in these, by the way, so that's why I'm doing it this way. Full slope underscore width. That's going to be a double, uh, and we'll put a width of, uh, say, 0.5 as a default value. And uh, let's just put in a back slope as well, so we can use that. Um, and of course, you have widths for any other bits and pieces you want to create. Uh, you just keep creating this list. So let's call it back slope. And I'm 
spell it right, it's good. And we'll call it backslope underscore slope. And it's going to be a slope as opposed to a grade. And let's make that one to one as well for a default. Alright, so that's, that's probably a good start. Um, so let's uh, continue on. So coming back to um, the point two and the link one we were making over here, highlight that again. And down here I can now say, okay, it's going to be a, uh, a slope. The slope we're going to use is the four slope slope. Four slope underscore slope. And now it's grabbing one of those uh, input parameters. It's going to take the default value to begin with. Delta X uh, wants to be the four slope width. And then we've got the full slope width. Now, we've got some tiny little images in there on the, uh, the top uh, right here. If we click this fit to screen button, it just does a zoom extents effectively. Now what would be nice to do, and what we actually want to do, you can see it's got this button here for add link to uh, or from point. If you untick that, it'll get rid of the link and you just have the point floating in space. For us we want to link in there, so let's tick that back on. And it says what codes do you want? So ordinarily in Civil 3D, um, if you've got just a, a link by itself, it would have the codes for uh, top and datum by default and any other ones you want. So let's go top and you need quote marks around top and then a comma, another quote marks, datum. Now you do have to make sure that they have the caps for the T and the D to make it work um, and be recognised as uh, the correct link codes in Civil 3D to make a surface etc out of it as you would normally. That being done, if we tick on the little codes button over here on the right, it will actually show us the, the codes that are assigned to that. In fact, for this particular one, I'm going to put shape underneath here, so I don't want that to be datum. So I'm going to come back in here and get rid of the datum. Click any other line, it just updates there. Alright, so that's going to be my, my top surface, it's going to use that to build itself. What I would like to do now, oh, let's just show you. You should find, if you spell one of these wrong, it recognises that it can't find it has a validation error in there. If you click on that, couldn't find that particular expression. So it does check if you get your spelling right along the way. Um, that it matches your parameters, so that's quite nice. All right, um, so that's our first um, little link put in there. Let's go and make the. Oh, you can zoom and scroll in this uh, pane on the on the right as well as you need to. Um, just in the usual little CAD way. What I'm going to say, what, what I'm going to put in here is a, a shape. Let's say we want a lined material, for instance, on this particular edge. There's a number of ways we can do it. Um, the easiest way at the moment, um, and what I've been trying to do for a while, I know a number of people have as well, um, I'd like a um, a shape in here that is effectively def defined as being perpendicular to, to that uh, L1 link that we've already made. So let's go and make some more links here. I'm going to drag a link, sorry, beg your pardon. We're going to make links by defining points, the same as what we've done before, that's the most universal way to do it. So just drag it into the space down here, I'm going to make P3, um, it's going to have a Delta X and Delta Y as a type here. Um, don't really want that. There's another type in here that's going to be um, more useful to us. Um, and I believe it's angle and distance. 
Let's try angle and distance. Yes, that's the one. So the angle, well, it's going to be point number three. It's going to be defined by angle and distance. We can define, we're just going to run from point one and it's going to have a reference point of point two. And the angle is defined from that line now. So let's put an angle of 90, it might be nine, minus 90 actually. Let's see how we go. And a distance of, uh, say, point 0.1, no, point, point zero 0.05, something like that. There we go. So you can see it's now maintaining, because we've used this uh, reference point, it's taking a 90 degree angle from that line. So if the slope of that line changes by somebody changing the four slope slope, um, this line will also uh, change with reference to that and always maintain a 90 degree angle. So it's not relying, most of the subassemblies in Civil 3D rely on uh, vertical or horizontal offsets. You don't have to do that in, with uh, using it this way, which is it's actually quite nice. So let's do another one of those. Um, let's go for uh, another point. And you just add it into this uh, flow diagram here. It's going to be point 0.4. It's going to run from point 0.2. It's going to not be delta x and delta y. It's going to be angle and distance. The reference point is going to be point 0.1. And I think the angle is going to be 90 degrees and a distance of 0 0.05. Now, yep, that's gone the right way. So we're all good there. Um, we then go and um, put in another point by itself. What a, uh, that should have a datum on it as a, as a code on that particular link. So let's call it... Uh, Datum with speech marks because that's what I want my datum surface to follow. And we're all good. So I think you can see how this builds up relatively easily once you've got the hang of how the interface works. Then we can make a link between P3 and P4. So we make a link. This time it's just a, uh, a link by itself. We don't need any additional points. Drops in there. Link 4 goes between P3 and P4, and that's all we need, um, except for we need a link code of datum as well, and to make sure you get the caps right. Okay, and those those are really the, the keys to uh, getting things to work properly, so those little details like getting the caps right. Um, putting speech marks and things like that. All right, now that we've got that shape, well, actually we've got the space for a shape, we need to put a shape in. So we come up to shape under the geometry, drop it in here. Here's our shape. Our shape code, um, again, speech marks. We can match any other shape code that is in our code set already, or we can put in our own uh, uh, custom one. So in this case, I'm going to call it lined underscore material. So that's going to be the shape code, and we can get that shape out in our um, our uh, volumes for the corridor, as you would with any other subassembly. So what we do is uh, use this pick box. You can specify the links you want it to run between, or you can just use this pick box over here, this green one, and just pick in screen where you want that shape to be, and we get this one line material showing up there. Simple. All right, so that's how you make a shape. Then you can go around and obviously um, construct those links in any way, manner, or form you want to, and uh, it will go and uh, construct that for you. All right, so now we want the uh, the bottom of our swale. So let's drag this over a little bit. Put another point and link. It's going to go from uh, P2. So just in the drop down here, you can choose P2. Uh, let's just use a delta x, delta y, so it's always going to be 0.5 of a metre wide for the bottom of the swale. Um, 
we don't need point codes, but we would like a link, please. And it's going to be top color datum. And I've got the bad habit of keeping my finger down on the shift key for too long. Top and datum. And that's our link 5, top and datum. OK. Right, the next point we're uh, looking to make, I'll scroll out a little bit here, is to bring the swale back up on the other side and then we need to test is it above or below the ground at that point. So one more link. Link and point, drop it down into there. And it's going to have a delta x and delta y, it's going to have a slope and a delta x, same as the front face. Let's make the slope um, uh, 1. Just type in 1, you get 100% in there. You don't type in percentage, which is what 3 meters to begin with. It's also going to have uh, a delta x. We don't want, let's use the for slope width. Is it going to do it? No, in fact, let's not. Oh, yeah, that'll be fine. No, we'll just set it at um, 0.5. Okay, so once it gets to 0.5, in fact, uh, it may have been better rather than set to to a delta x for that link. A uh, delta y might have been better, and then we could have bought that up delta y. Uh, the same as the front one may, would have made more sense, but um, we'll continue for the moment. So we're back at the level of the, um, the start of our, our sub-assembly. So we've, um, yeah, if we use some delta y, it would have worked a lot better, in fact. Uh, but this will do for demonstration purposes. Um, Or in fact, we could just change it. Okay, let's change it. Let me show you how to do that. You can pick any link you've already made or shape. So I can click on that link, highlights it in the uh, flowchart, and it also um, gives you the information on about that link down in the uh, the listing at the bottom, list pane at the bottom here. Let's change the type to slope and delta y. Okay, that's not the delta y I wanted, that's not the slope. So we want the full slope, slope, near the slope again. Full slope, slope. And what I'm going to do is actually change where I've got full slope width here on the right. I'm going to change that to full slope height. Will make more sense. And the delta y is going to be full slope. Height. OK. And go fit the screen again. Link to Okay, what have we got here? Full slope height, delta y, slope, delta y, delta y is point five. Has to be minus point five. Okay, we're looking closer, but we've still got something screwy. No, oh, perhaps not. No, there we go. That's fixed it. So you can delve back into the um, 
into any one of these and reset the, the values for it. So what I'm going to do here is go to link six. We've got our slope of that, but our I'm going to change that to delta y as well. So our delta y is matched for both the front face and the back face. That's what I should have done to begin with. It makes more sense now if we do it this way. So it's one, and that will be full slope. Underscore height. Be if it was actually doing the right thing. What if I got the we number P6 from 0.5? Got a link there. Slight height. It's negative. Ah. Okay. I think it's because we've got a negative here, so let's see if we can make a negative in front of that. Close. There we go. You can put a negative in front of that. I hadn't tried that before, but it works very well. Okay, so now we're at the point where we need to make our um, comparison to a surface. So we need to give it a, a surface to target, or target surface as you would set it in the corridor. So click on target parameters here. Create parameter, and I'm just going to call it surf one. It's going to be a type of surface. There's a number of things you can use as targets, elevations, offsets, or surfaces. And a preview value. You can see it puts in a dotted line up here. If I put in a preview value of uh, say 0.3 of a meter, it's going to set it 0.3 of a meter above the origin. So this would be the case where you've got a um, you're in a cut situation. This happens if you if we what the behavior we want is to have it in a cut situation. It runs up till it just puts in a, a continues that batter slope and runs up till it hits the um, the surface. Um, oh, and also what I also want on L6. One thing I forgot to do is put in some point codes on it. So I'll just zip back to 0.5. You can highlight things in here and they highlight over here to tell you which one you're dealing with. I'll just go Control C to copy that and put the same codes on L6 here. And I also want to put a datum on that one. On L4. Once to have the codes, it's already got datum there, that's good. Okay. So let's go back to here. So we need to make a decision at that point, and there are additional objects on this um, on this left-hand pane. One of which is a decision. So let's drag that in there. So it's a true/false decision. So it's either yes or no. It has two outcomes. So the outcomes we're interested in are: is this point above or below that surface? So the um, condition here that we want to test um, is going to rely on, well what we need to do first is put a point at that surface that we can test with the delta y or the, or the, the y value between P6 and the surface at that point. So what I'm actually going to do is remove that. Any of these you can right click on them, delete out of there. We need another point in here first and it's what's called an auxiliary point. So if I drag an auxiliary point, and these auxiliary things, uh, all these auxiliary links, points, surface links, etc. Which I think we want surface link. Let's delete that. And bring in a. Oh no, it's not. Big new pardon. The surface link follows the surface from memory. It's just an auxiliary point like I had originally. These, uh, once you get in them in here, you can drag this flowchart around wherever, wherever you want it. It just moves around the place. And you can disconnect arrows and connect them onto other little 
of these uh, little markers if you want to connect them onto those different markers, but most of the time it goes in the right place. Okay, this is going to make an auxiliary point, AP1. You can see it's thrown it in there already. It's going to be a slope to a surface. That's the next one I want. No, I'm not begging pardon. A delta X on surface is what I want. That would work better than a slope. So it's going to from point 6, the delta X, it's going to be no change in the X values, so call it 0. The surface target is going to be the one I've defined over here, surf 1, and no offsets on that target. We're going to add, uh, we don't want to add a link in there, we just want a point. So you can see what it's done, it's just put in a point called AP1, auxiliary point 1, and they're, they're just construction points. You're not going to see that when you actually put the subassembly into the um, into the corridor. So that's not going to uh, trouble us as we go. Now let's go and um, do the test. So I can drag this pane down a bit and we put in a decision test. Drop in there. There we go. Okay, so this decision is going to um, do a test on the, the height of P6 and AP1. Now these expressions, they do have to be, well, they do have a, a format. Um, in this case it's going to be, um, is P6Y, so it's P6.Y. Um, less than ap1.y. So it's the y value of which sure was ap1. Is the y value of 0.6 less than the y value of ap1? Just a, a simple expression. Um, there's a whole bunch of examples of these expressions in the help files for the subassembly builder, and, and you know the, the way they should be formatted. Um, so that's where I got that, that, that uh, format from. Um, don't claim to be an expert in it yet, but there's a heap of examples in there that uh, will give you most of what you need. So go OK on that, and the answer is either true or false. If um, point 0.6y is less than, then we have the situation here where we're in cut, and in that case, if that's true, we go and put in a, uh, another point and a link. So pop that in here, and my arrow's gone all over the place, so I'm going to drag that. Arrow back to where it should be, it'll look a bit better. Click onto these little uh, lugs on the side, connects the arrows. There we go. True. It's going to put another point that goes to the surface. So make, let's make that a point that is going to be P7. It's going to be a slope surface. It's going to go from P6. We can have a slope of 100. And the surface target is surface 1. Oops, not 100%, that's what happens when you put in 100%, that should be 1, it reads it as 100%. And it should be not reversed the slope direction. There we go. So that's what we're talking about in a fill situation. So it's going to go until it finds that surface if it's in cut. However, we want to, on the other side of this decision branch, say what's going to do if it's in fill. So I can take the target parameters of the surface and change the preview value here to minus 0.3, for instance. When I click somewhere out of that field, it drops the surface down to minus 0.3 and says, OK, well, I have nothing that tells me what to do when it's in uh, a fill situation. Um, you're going to have to build something, so let's build it. 
So what we're going to do is, um, I, if you recall from the um, slideshow over here, I was going to put in an arc at this point. So let's show you how to construct, do some construction and put in an arc. So let's go and do that. So we need some construction points in here. Um, let's go fit the screen a little bit there, scroll out a bit. All right, so I'm going to put in a uh, auxiliary point, another more, more of these construction lines, and I'm going to put it in on the side of the decision tree. And I'm going to take that false and clip it into there. And I'm going to take that line and delete it. Just hit the delete button. Okay, so this is our false branch. Um, let's make this one a line that is a um, slope and delta y, for instance, from point P6. We have a slope of 100, 1, in this case might be in there, and a delta y of say 0.5. Okay, so there's our little um, construction line. Let's make another construction line. Um, so let's make another auxiliary point and line in here. Make that a little bit bigger. Auxiliary point. Oh, by the way, um, you can see that we've got this decision here. There's another thing called a switch down below the decisions on the on the right-hand pane. A switch is a decision with more than two outcomes. So, for instance, you can say a, a range of uh, depths here. In this case, below the uh, the ground surface can have different um, different uh, addendums to the uh, the subassembly. So uh, a switch here is just a decision with multiple, out multiple out possible outcomes. All right, uh, so let's go and make this other one here. It's going to be, can we just do delta x and delta y is fine. It's going to make AP2. It's going to have delta x of, say, uh, 1. So I just want a horizontal line out there. Cool. That being done, we can make our arc. So there is a... Um, fillet arc over here in the advanced geometry, so I'm going to use one of those. Grab fillet arc, drag it under here. And we're going to um, give that a definition. It's uh, going to have a radius, well let's go for, specify the first link and the second link. First link it's going to run through from is our, our uh, construction link AL1 and it's going to run to AL2 it's going to have a radius of say you can see it's thrown in there already 0.5 of a meter so there's a little arc gone in it's got eight, a tessellation of eights so it's made up of eight little line segments uh, we probably want some um, link codes as well here link codes are in there top and datum for that one. Okay, that being done we can uh, just finish our our batter slope. So we want a link between point 0.6 and point 0.8 so we just do a straightforward link. Link codes top and datum start point 0.6 in point, point 0.8 you can see it's dropped it in, so that's what we want. Another link, uh, or in fact another point and link is what we're going to do now. Let's go 0.5 horizontally for the top of our uh, bund. So it could be delta x and delta y. It's going to go from 0.9. Uh, delta x, say, of 0.5 of a meter. And it's going to have a link there, 
thank you, that's better, and a co of top and datum. Right, and last part we need is a slope to surface, which is a, well it's just another point and link effectively, drop it in there. Slope to surface, slope of uh, minus one, surface target of surf one, and there you go. You can see it's going to throw that in for us. And the last thing is the link codes for that. Good. All right. What we might want to do is look at the, the packet settings is what they call it, or the, the names of this packet file. So we can give the subassembly a name, let's call it uh, demo underscore daylight. Demo daylight, there we go. And you can put descriptions and if you want to make a help file for it you can and we'll, we'll flick an image in later on, I've got one there, um, sitting there. We'll do that at the talk space I think. Uh, that's going to work better. Alright, so those are our packet settings and we should be able to now save that. So we can go file, save and we'll call it uh, demo daylight. <laughs> Just a little file, PKT file, and uh, I'll put it in my folder here, demo daylight.pkt. So if you want to test how this thing works, um, simply come into the viewer on the right here, and you can change that uh, surface level. So input and output parameters. We can go and change the, uh, sorry, begging pardon, target parameters. Change that instead of minus 0.3, just make that 0.3. And that's what it's going to do in the uh, cut situation. We can also scroll in on that uh, shape we've made and experiment with what happens when you change one of these default parameters. For instance, uh, the four slope slope. If we make that uh, minus 0.5 for instance, you can see that it's changed that slope but it's also kept the, um, the shape completely perpendicular to that which is what we were wanting. So that makes me happy. Just stick that back. And that wasn't exactly what I was looking for. Adjusted the wrong one. That's one. Point five. Fit the screen again. Ah. Done it again, haven't I? Um, excellent. So did I have that as a negative? Did I? Must have done. That's better. Okay, got everything back where it should be. Let's do a save on that and show you how it works. Just make sure I haven't. Got, I have got everything right, so it's doing that in the fill situation, and sorry, in the cut situation, and that in the fill situation, so we're all good. All right, so we can close this uh, down now. It asks you want to save changes, yes, PKT file, and we should go and try it out. So let's start up Civil, which is here. Now I've got a pre-made uh, little corridor here for us to play with, just got a bit of road. Um, a little uh, sub-assembly I've made, so we'll have a look at that shortly. Um, went to the nth degree on that one um, and made it 
100% proper. Uh, this, but well, let's throw in our little demonstration one. So if we bring up our um, tool palettes now, we want to add our PKT file to one of our tool palettes. So let me put it on the, uh, where are we? About a, about a slope tab. Okay. So under the insert tab in the ribbon, under the import drop down, we've got import sub assemblies. Just make sure you guys can all see that. Import tab, import sub assemblies. Yep, you should be able to see that now. Click on that. It says the source file. It's the PKT file we've just saved, which was called Demo Daylight. Open that one. And import to the tool palette and the batter slopes tab. Or you can put it in the catalog library as well, um, where all the other tools are kept by default. Well, let's just put it in the tool palette. So we'll go OK. And scroll down to the bottom of the tool palette, and we've got Demo Daylight right down the bottom here. So you can right click on that and give it a, an image. So you can specify an image. And I've just made a quick rough image on this one. Uh, what did I call it? I think it's that one. There we go. It's just a little image that shows the, the daylight. And of course you can drag that around the place where you want to put it um, in the tool palettes. If you want it in there for instance. Okay, so let's uh, now that we've got it in there, we can just use it like any other sub-assembly. So we click on Demo Daylight, and um, it brings up the properties. And you can see these are the parameters we set, full slope, slope, back slope, full slope height, etc. are all in there in the side on the right. And I'm just going to clip that in using the defaults into there. And the preview has a big image there, that's of course the, oh, you can actually change that in the in the settings, I forgot to do that. Um, that's just the preview size, but it's of course trying to target a surface uh, in that case. So having done that, we can close that and we can do exactly the same as what we would normally do with um, the sub-assembly, is to pick it, and remember you don't grip edit these things, you always right click and use the move to, or the copy to, or the mirror. Um, never grip edit them around the place, or else you introduce offsets. We can go mirror onto here, as you would any other sub-assembly. Alright, so let's go and uh, build that uh, corridor. Or rebuild the corridor, I should say. So right click, rebuild my corridor. Go with the corridor properties I should, probably should have done first and set the targets for those batter slopes. So I'm going to set all targets, click here to set all, Egypt Road, OK and OK. Now it's looking a bit better, and I'm just going to grab the surface there. In fact I can grab the corridor as well. Object Viewer, that's all looking good. How good is that? You can see uh, our rounded edges on the batter slope, you can see, well oh, there's my little dish drain, we'll have a look at that one in a moment, and you can see in the areas where it's not needed, um, it's uh, in, the, in the, these cases it's in uh, cut at the back slope here, on the back slope of the hill. Um, it doesn't need to put in that big, um, the big uh, slope or the big uh, bat, bat, batter slope on the side. Um, and so it's just going to intersect with the surface at those points. Um, my surface probably needs a, a boundary applied to it a little bit, but uh, you can see that it is actually working like any other sub-assembly would or should. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, let me just show you one other thing here. Close that viewer. Which is this other pre-made sub-assembly. Oh, sorry, 
previously made subassembly, one I prepared earlier, as they like to say. Um, I have actually put it in the lanes and mediums tab in my construction here. No, I haven't. I'll put it in the curves and shoulders. Now this one I went to the nth degree and made out a nice little dish drain um, image for it, as you hopefully can see there in the uh, in my tool palettes. So it uh, looks very similar to the other ones that are all there in 3D and all that sort of carry on. Of course, you don't have to go to that degree, but um, it does look pretty. This one here, if I bring up the properties for it, we've got a whole bunch of parameters made for it. Its width, uh, the strain depth, the wall width, etc. So if I zoom in on this thing here, let's take the drain depth and make it, it's 100 mils at the moment, which is a bit much, uh, 0 0.05 for instance, and you'll see that update on the screen. So this one I made as a three-point arc, so it makes it quite easy to control. The width of the uh, straight parts on the edge here is the, um, where is it? That's the depth. Same subbase. Wall width. That's the one that's highlighted. There it is. So let's make that uh, point zero five. We can bring those points out. Out wider and play around with those. We've got different depths of the, uh, for instance, the sand layer here. We can increase that to point one. And it makes the sand layer, leveling uh, layer in there deeper. Of course, it puts that down as well, so I want to change that back. Um, but uh, what you can see here is that I do have some shapes associated with that already. I've got the, the concrete, uh, the sand, and this here I've actually called, um, you can see what it is if I highlight over it, um, the shape code is sub-base there. So I've, I've spelt that exactly the same as the sub-base used in the other sub-assemblies, the standard civil 3D ones, and you can see straight away when it comes in it gets the cross-hatching or whatever uh, coloration that's associated with those, um, and when you do a uh, volume calculation at the end, that volume of that area is going to be added in with the volume of anything else called sub-base and tallied up in, the, in the, the plot at the end. So essentially that's uh, that's the quick run-through. It wasn't that quick, it's almost, uh, almost an hour's up, but um, In a nutshell, those are the, the things that uh, you probably need to know to get you started, and um, there's all sorts of things you can do. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, sitting down, nutting out how you want it to work, and then just working through the process of filling out that, um, that uh, flowchart. And it's, it's not too hard once you've had a bit of a play with it. Um, I was scratching my head for a while to begin with, but uh, it's... Um, to come together now and it makes a lot more sense the second time uh, or third time that I've been through it. So good luck having a play with those. Um, thank you very much for tuning in today. Nice to see uh, some of you again and uh, make sure you have a nice weekend and uh, we'll see you back for another week next week. Thank you very much and good night.